Hey, this is Josh from Silosis, and you're listening to Metal Vani. Hey, Josh, how are we doing, brother? Yeah, very good. How are you? I'm doing good. A new album, Dormant Heart, a highly anticipated Silosis album. So how excited and nervous are you feeling, you know, uh, amidst all the album release? Um, very excited, but um, just glad that it's not, not that much longer to wait now because we began tracking the album in March earlier of this year. Right. Um, which is quite a long time ago in, in the grand scheme of themes. Uh, so when... Uh, by the time the album's out it will have been like eight months or so until like from start to it being released so it's been a very long wait is what i was trying to say it's been a long way as well as a productive for the fans as well, because when i listen to this album i feel basically emotionally connected to the songs you've written because you're speaking about injustice and society being passive victims of that so you know the, the the concept which you have used for this album, could you throw some light on it so that, you know, uh, your fans will have a clear idea of what to expect? Um, I guess so. There's nothing too um, too specific. And I definitely try and avoid um, uh, forcing like my own opinions on people. But it's more about just uh, being aware and, and, I guess, awareness in general of uh, the world around you. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it kind of deals with how people and you know i'm not saying i'm not included in this as well but a lot of people just go through life um you know just going through the motions not really thinking for themselves or right just on autopilot they kind of live in their own kind of little bubble and don't really think about you know the rest of the world in in, in that kind of way i guess and uh i think that's come with just growing up a bit. I think when you're like a teenager and we started, you know, we're very young and we're still considered a young band and you've got, you know, teenage angst, but you're still kind of just wrapped up in your own little world. And then you get a bit older, you mature a bit, but then you start paying attention to more of the world around you, the outside world and that kind of stuff. So I guess that's where some of the inspirations come from uh, for this one. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and you know, unfortunately, you guys also had a driving accident, you know, when you were in the US tour with Trivium in September. So, you know, did it act some sort of a catalyst for inspiration? Um, no, in all honesty, because we, we always are so prepared um, in terms of writing that the whole album was written before that, that happened. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, I mean, there's never a period where we're... Um, not writing music and we don't ever want to be rushed to write a new album because right. we have to really take our time and perfect every little kind of detail um so yeah most of it was already done by then to be honest yeah okay so and, and it's also been evident that you have recorded this album while you were on tour so you know there must be definitely some interesting stories about making of this album that probably your fans are not aware of um it we 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 made it away from tour, but the the recording process was broken up between mm -hmm. with touring in in the middle. Yeah, so like we did the the drums we recorded in Ipswich in England, right? And then then we went away on tour, and then we came back and did the guitars and that kind of thing. Um, so in terms of the recording process, there's nothing too interesting mm -hmm. that happened. It was kind of heads down, um, kind of boring <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you also released a few tracks as well so far, and even a music video. So fans have got some insight of what to expect from Dom and Tart. So you must have come across some, some you know, let's say some reviews or some uh, feedback from your fans. You know, has that been exciting or, you know, that's been like normal? Um, It's been exciting, yeah. And in terms of reviews that, well, I've, I don't think I've seen any actual reviews yet, but in terms of some of the press that I've spoken to um, mm -hmm. and who have really had a chance to digest the album for, you know, over a, a couple of weeks, um, they seem to be saying that it, it's our best. And I, I would agree that it is our best album. I think um, the tracks that we released were picked by uh, the label and our management to be, you know, the singles because they're the most straightforward and melodic songs and we've always had kind of straightforward and melodic songs in the past but um right. 
It's just that they were never the ones that the fans heard first. So I think some of the fans are a bit worried that that's what the whole album's like. But um, I think any you know fans of the band uh, won't be disappointed because it's still uh, very heavy, very technical. But there, there is a lot of variation on there at the same time, yeah. Honestly, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle for me as a fan because I can expect you guys to take you know this particular route, route. And when I listen to this album, it just blows my mind. So I'm sure most of the fans will definitely connect to the album. I hope so. Yeah, I think uh, once they hear the whole thing, and it, I think more than any of the other albums, it, it's a grower. Like you do need to listen to it a few more times, but right. I think it pays off. You know, the more you kind of give it a chance. Yeah. It's really great to see how you guys have you know you know. They've spread, you know, uh, your wings. You have, you know, tried to work on different things, include because when I listen to the the longest track, the last track, Quicent, which is around nine minutes mark, and then I'm listening to Victims and Pawns. There's like two different worlds, and and how you make sure that towards the middle the album, you know, kind of takes that balance, and then you, it, it's got, it's like a journey. It's like a journey which fans have to listen from, you know, A to Z rather than you know jumping directly to N or M. Yeah, I think. Um... We're not always, uh, we don't always sound like a prog rock band or very progressive, but I think in terms of the albums as a whole, we're very inspired by prog rock and progressive music. I always like songs that kind of take you on a journey right? Um, and, and that, that whole vibe. But it's really just when we're writing, we're, we're not thinking in terms of an album all the time. It's normally you just write what comes out and see if we can make it work as a Silosia song and, and still, you know, have the vibe. Yeah, read in that vibe. The album. Yeah. They're really cool. And what about your vocals and, you know, guitars and this? You recorded it at Wizard Studios, isn't it? So, and it must have been a great feeling recording something at home. Um, yeah, it's, it's very relaxing. Um, yeah, it's uh, no stress. And we, we always wanted to, we, we try and not to overplay things. So mm -hmm. we rehearse as much as we can. We get um, as good on our instruments to play the songs as possible. But we try not to spend, you know, ages, like weeks, uh, tracking the guitars to make it sound like a robot's played it. So we, we, we like to try and get it done quite quickly, um, just so it retains some sort of life and liveliness. And, right. You know, our first two albums well our first album especially we spent like two weeks just recording mm -hmm. just the rhythm guitars and it's just too clinical for us i guess yeah absolutely and, and using this you know title is dormant heart kind of gives that sort of uh you know a feedback from fan that it might be something soothing but it definitely is not yeah yeah exactly i think a lot of people think that i think they just uh hear the word heart and assume it's I don't know. It's somewhat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not a very metal word, I guess, but um, it's yeah. I, I don't know. It, it kind of it was the best thing that we could think of that really suits the album and what the album's about. And uh, yeah, it's definitely not a soothing album, apart from maybe the last track, I guess. Right now, you being you know you've completely produced the album, and and Scott has done an amazing job engineering it. So you know. When it comes to inspiration of taking this responsibility of producing the album, how was this experience, you know, taking this up in its entirety? Um, I guess uh, it's just easier. Like, I've, I've been recording bands, I've re recorded the first two Silosis EPs, mm -hmm. um, you know, years ago, and I've come a long way since then, um, production-wise. I've recorded other bands and uh, done demos for us, and I'm always recording at home. So I've, it's just... Uh, built up over the years just the confidence and i really know what i'm doing now and it's just so much easier to be able to record yourself it's so much quicker and you know it saves a lot of money and we just wanted to right. um there's there's at this stage there's not really any point in going with someone else when you know you can do the job on your own yeah exactly it, and it's good to work with scott for like the drums he's he's great at recording drums and that's the point in the recording where you know, you might make some changes and, and having an outside ear like Scott to say, oh, you should maybe try doing this or go to this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you still can get an outside opinion like you would working with an oil producer um, when you're doing the drums. But then once the drums are done, everything's kind of solidified anyway. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, it works out well for us.
That's cool. And since we're talking about drums, I know the the the, the album was recorded by Rob, you know, as your yeah. original drummer, who's no longer with Silos. So, you know, how's been the transition, you know, for this new material with you know Ali Richardson joining in now? So, uh, I mean, it must have been a tough uh, phase for the band. Um, to be honest with you, it was actually quite um easy going. Uh, nice. we're still good friends with Rob, and uh, he. You know, there was no bad feelings. It was just that he couldn't really commit. He wanted to. He's going back into education. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't quite remember what he's doing, but he's very clever. So, uh, so yeah, there was there was no bad blood there. Um, after we recorded the drums for the album, we went on tour with Devil Driver around um, Europe. Right. And Rob told us like a couple of days before that tour that he couldn't uh commit to doing the tour he had some interviews lined up mm-hmm. so we got ali from bleeping within who were also on the tour anyway who were the first band on uh, to right. learn the set in like two days um filled in for us for the whole tour played two sets a night um absolutely nailed it and he's one of the best drummers in the uk so um as soon when we when rob later did come to say that he was leaving we just you know weren't too worried we sort of went straight to ali it was like can you do it he said yes and it's all been very easy. We, we've known Ali for years as well, so we, we knew he'd fit in um, outside of you know his abilities as a player and that kind of thing. That's so uh, awesome. yeah, it's been very smooth, very very good. So but we're very looking forward to um, playing live with him and also sort of you know seeing what he comes up with for the next album because he's a very uh, creative drummer. Right. It, it's really cool to see how different artists play, do double duties. Like, you know, we have Gary Hole doing it for Slayer and Exodus. Yeah. And exactly. now we have Ellie doing it for Silosis and Blade Room with him. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Now, looking at the artwork, it's 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 a different story itself. I mean, Bonfire, the, the Bristol-based artist, has done such an amazing job. I mean, when we look at the artworks of, let's say, Opeth, or, you know, Catatonia or now Silosis, there's, it speaks to you as a fan. So how did this idea come, you know, about of having an artwork like you have on Dormant Heart? Um, I guess, you know, we're really uh, inspired by a lot of prog rock and, and early 70s music. And I like also a lot of kind of doom music and that kind of stuff. And try not to go for the kind of cheesy, um, over-the-top thrash metal kind of artwork with skulls. <laughs> right flames and dragons and stuff exactly yeah so we're, we're uh we obviously don't want to sound pretent- pretentious or like we're above it in any way but we definitely want to try and do something a bit more mature for to represent the band uh, in terms of the artwork i think it's very important for us like uh, having really good artwork and really tying in with the the feel of the whole album mm, and uh you know at the same time it, it kind of represents our, our music we're very inspired by a lot of thrash music that's kind of like the main part of our sound is, is the thrash thing, but we try and do it in maybe a more mature way or, or, or mix in influences um, that are a bit more, uh, you know, progressive and that kind of stuff. It, essentially, I guess what we'd like to try and do is what uh, Opeth do with death metal and 70s prog rock, right. uh, prog rock is do, uh, you know, combine kind of... So have, have that old perfect balance metal. of you know yeah. pro, 70s prog rock and and you know the the current death metal yeah we're, we're sort of trying to do it with like thrash metal and more kind of prog rock by bands like cult of luna and, and that sort of stuff i guess yeah <laughs> that's really awesome now for you as uh, as an artist as a musician there must be one song on this album which is like most personal to you um probably the closing track yeah quiescent just because uh, I don't know. I think I'm most proud of that song. It's very hard to actually write good um, melodic songs. Right. But, um, that that can be the hardest thing, or, or even like the simple stuff can be the hardest to write because it can't just be simple. It's got to be catchy and simple. Um, so, but yeah, I, I guess that song's probably the the most proud, um, even though it's definitely not the most representative of Silo to the band. Right. And the music we do, but yeah, that one. Fantastic. It. Now, since we're talking about Opeth, are you liking the vibe on Heritage and now Pale Communion? Um, I've not heard much of Pale Communion, um, but my dad, they're pretty much one of his favorite bands, so I'll have to borrow it off him. But um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I like uh, when they first said that they were going just, you know, all prog and no death metal, I was yeah, kind of fine with it, to be honest, because uh, that's what 
you know really interest me about their music but i do miss the more progressive kind of not necessarily with the death metal stuff but just in terms of the songs were you know more of a journey um and they're more more like uh, black water park yeah that kind of stuff and deliverance um you know like the songs were longer and they sort of had a, a few more twists in terms of them right um but i i love everything they do to be honest so i and i completely respect it just from a one artist to another like if True. if you're not making music that isn't what you want to do as an artist that's pretty much the definition of selling out because it's hard to gauge how good something is if your heart's not really in it because that's the only way you can tell if what you're doing is good is if it really excites you you know when you're writing it i guess absolutely josh now how about playing this you know taking these songs on stage because that's where the magic happens your fans want to see these songs on live so what songs from this album are you planning to basically unleash and and what are the touring plans ahead um i think we're there's probably going to end up playing a lot more of these songs live than um you know in the past we we only learned like a few tracks of each of the previous albums but there's so many on this album that we really want to play live i think awesome. the title track is going to be a lot of fun to play and the very first song where the wolves come to die we really want to when we uh can headline and do our own shows and we've got a longer set you know right. open up with that and have some you know cool lights and some smoke and everything make it really kind of atmospheric that'll be fun but um in terms of touring plans we've got nothing cemented as of yet but we aim to be doing like a european and uk tour in like the start of the year and then i guess uh the possible the Euro- US tour? Hopefully, yes. There'll be um, European festivals during the summer, but our plan is usually to go to the US um, sort of June onwards. We we try and go there like late summer and end of the year if we can, yeah. But awesome. nothing set in stone. <laughs> no worries. But 2015 is kind of jam back for the band. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll be trying to just tour consistently. So uh, we'll be trying to do as much as possible, but... Um, like I said, it's quite early to... To comment on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So what about coming to India? Any, any, do Silas's are aware of your fan following here? And let me tell you yeah. something. When you guys come over here for the first time, you would definitely see chaos. No, we, we've been there twice. Yeah, we played two shows in India. Um, we played, I think, New Delhi each time. Yeah. And it was insane. Wow. Um, so definitely, was, you know, these uh, songs need to be played live in India as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go back. Like we had a lot of fun uh, both times we've been there. Um, I think yeah, like not many metal bands had been there before before us. Like I think I don't even know if Iron Maiden had been at that point. I think the first time we went to India was two thousand nine. Right, and um, you <laughs> came actually after uh, when Maiden, Megadeth, and Machine Head, and after that you guys came in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> so yeah, it's really I'm, cool. We don't have any plans. It's you know we have to wait for the offers to come in and it's very rare that we get anyone offering to to get us to come over to india but um we'd love to do it again i i especially would love to go back um and, and play there just because well we had such a great, great time like you say the crowds were insane um i guess that's that's what happens when you don't get many shows over there <laughs> right way more excited to, to see you play and and stuff so it's a, it's really good atmosphere every time Awesome, indeed. Now, 2014 is coming to an end. So if I have to ask you, you know, what are the three albums that have changed your life as a musician? Um, it's a tough one. I, I mean, I think And Justice for All by Metallica mm-hmm. is definitely up there. Um, is being sort of the blueprint for Silosis. That whole album is um, completely inspirational to, to what we do. But mm-hmm. uh, then there's... I guess Symbolic by Death is another one. It's very progressive. Yeah, Landmark heavy. album. Yeah, exactly. Um, I probably would pick Far Beyond Driven because by Pantera because it's just one of my favorite albums ever and I'm obsessed with it. But um, I guess I'd probably pick something like Mastodon Crack the Sky because that was oh, really awesome. When that came out, I was just like... Because I've always been, we've always been into progressive music. We've always been into 
um, you know, bands like Mastodon and stuff, but it just wasn't coming out in our music, and it, it was really annoying that it wasn't quite as prevalent, you know, just the more progressive aspects. Um, so that album made us really kind of take things up a notch in terms of, you know, the prog side of what we do, and uh, that's why Edge of the Earth sort of came out the way it did, because of Crack the Sky, I guess. Oh, fantastic. I kind of like how you chose these three albums which have that prog elements as well. Yeah. So that's really cool. Thanks, Josh. I had a great time, you know, having a chat with you. Before I conclude, how about you define Dormant Heart in just one sentence? Um, our best album yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a generic statement, I'd say. No, I know. Um, I, in one sentence, it would have to be a very long sentence. <laughs> um, it depends if if i'm just trying to sell it to someone who's never heard the band or yeah that's a good way that's a good way yeah you can do that um i guess it would be oh i don't know dark progressive thrash metal <laughs> wow dark progressive ah, that makes a lot of sense really awesome <laughs> yeah. fantastic jug it, it, it's been an honor having a chat with you and I look forward to see you guys live and I wish you all the best for the album sales, for the tours and for all your future endeavors. Cool. Thank you very much, man. It was great speaking to you as well.